Welcome everyone to our episode 78 of our season four of the podcast Cultivating a New Generation. In today's episode, we are going to talk about boost your brain to flow. So we are going to go deep into the topic of flow and how our brain is accessing that amazing state that allows you to get into a set of concentration steps, exploration, and also you are going to be immersed in a world where nobody can uh, bother you. You are not distracted. You are fully focused and productivity enhances. That's what everyone wants in terms of uh, moving forward and in, in anything that you are doing in your work, in the school, in learning something new, in acquiring a new skill, whatever it is that you want to do, this state of flow will enhance your brain to expand the connections and to enter into a much better place than the famous metaverse. So this is the science of flow and how other systems are also working to enhance it. So to talk about this topic, I use as a reference the article of Van der Linden from 2021, and the title is The Neuroscience of the Flow State, Involvement of the Locus Coruleus Norepinephrine System. So we are going to go deep into this topic and without further ado let's start defining what is flow and how do we know about flow flow is a state of full task engagement that is accompanied with low levels of self-referential thinking flow is considered highly relevant for human performance and well-being and has therefore been studied extensively so this is low levels of self-referential thinking means that you are not so much self-involved in your problems, in worries, in the future or in the past. You are more concerned about what you are doing. You are really in the state of the now. You are in presence of the things that you are doing. In the present review that I'm going to speak about, the people, the researchers focus on how the brain's locus coruleus norepinephrine system, and we are going to use the abbreviation LCNE system, may be involved in a range of behavioral and subjective manifestations of flow. The LCNE system regulates decisions regarding task engagement and disengagement. This is done via different modes for baseline and a stimulus evoke the norepinephrine release. Norepinephrine is also noradrenaline so that you can understand better what we are going to talk about. And this is a powerful neurotransmitter that allows you to have this kind of concentration mode and start performing the task in an easier way and without being concerned about the time that you are investing, but enhancing the productivity. For both of these kind of task engagement and disengagement, there is a match between a person's skill and task challenge is important in order to induce high levels of task-related attention. So the task has to be challenging so that you really start inducing this attention. If the task is easy, that's why many times you get distracted because your, your brain is not, is not being demanded of the attention and the cognitive skills that you require. So moreover, Physio psychophysiological indicators of this locus coruleus norepinephrine system or LC in NE, NE, sorry, uh, 
such as the eye pupil diameter and arousal are also sensitive to flow state. So we are going to understand how our eyes are also telling us if we are really, really focused, if we are not uh, distracted, and if we get that arousal of doing this kind of task and enjoying what we are doing, that's the most powerful state that we can appreciate because we are also generating a lot of neurotransmitters and hormones of the gratitude loop. Flow is related to arousal in an inverted U shape. Similarly, in theories of the LCNE system, task engagement is highest when intermediate levels of arousal. So in 2004, Dietrich suggested that during flow, the frontal lobes may be less active, indicating that much of the behavioral regulation is bottom up. So it is an auto automatic system that is going to enter when you are being challenged by the task. In addition, Ulrich, another researcher in 2014 and 16, used functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI to examine the various brain areas that are active or inactive during this flow state. They could not confirm the hypofrontality accounting of flow because dorsal lateral and prefrontal areas were quite active during flow. However, the frontal areas to self-reflective thinking were less active. Using the source location functions of the EEG or electroencephalogram, other researchers in 2020 followed the brain activity of a pro professional tight rope performer. In line with hyperfrontality theory, periods of flow were characterized by lower frontal lobe activity compared to more stressful task periods. Besides, such a specific neuropsychological findings also has been effort to integrate such findings into more comprehensive models on how the brain establishes flow. Just imagine performing this kind of activity of being in a tight rope and not allowing yourself to be distracted because your life depends on it, of course, and you are being demanding a lot of energy from the um, frontal, uh, dorsolateral frontal lobes. So that's the kind of information that these new tools of the fMRI or EEG are going to give us in terms of the electrical activity of the brain that we are um, demanding. It has been established that in order to experience flow, a key dimension is the match between the person's skill and the task challenge, as I mentioned earlier. A too easy task more likely leads to boredom, and we have experienced that, and that's why Many times when it is a mechanical task or our brain is not being challenged, we tend to distract more and we tend to lose time and not move forward in the things that we are supposed to do. A too difficult task on the opposite side often leads to frustration, stress, or lack of interest, which are all states that are largely incompatible with flow. That's why also when we are diving into these kind of science topics, the idea is that I am doing my best to explain these kind of topics in the easiest way so that people, any kind of person, even if they don't have a science background, can understand what is happening in terms of the brain even if they don't really uh, can imagine or know where is the part of the brain that I'm talking about specifically. We are not being uh, 
trained as neurosurgeons or something like that. We are just trying to know our systems much better. And the important information is that is the prefrontal and the dorsolateral um, regions of the brain that are going to be engaged in this kind of activity of flow. So when the task is too uh, difficult, we tend to feel that kind of frustration and we just get stressed and then we leave the things that we don't understand or we don't have interest in understanding. Such a skill challenge match that is central to flow already hints a possible involvement of this locus coruleus of the norepinephrine system. So whenever you start being lured to a topic, you start releasing this kind of norepinephrine. And this substance is going to um, allow you to initiate a cascade of other systems that are going to help your brain to lay the path onto the new area, the new skill, the new task, and engage more with the activity. Another defining flow characteristic is the strong attentional focus, sometimes referred to as task engagement or absorption. So we have also seen people, and also this is funny because children, when they start watching a movie or watching TV, they fully engage with the with the time that they are spending watching something. And even if you speak to them, they don't listen. They are totally immersed in that kind of activity. Well, imagine that kind of concentration power in a task that you have to solve in a new skill that you have to acquire or in reading or in doing something at work that is going to, of course, help you to move in your work performance. This engagement and absorption implies the inhibition of task irrelevant stimuli or thoughts. So you are not paying attention to your phone you are not paying attention to any other um, dialogues that you might be hearing, and you are not paying attention to any kind of thoughts that you are having because you are fully uh, focused in the activity. The brain's central executive network, which is going to be abbreviated as CEN, CEN, is presumed to play a relevant role in this flow-related focus. So this SEN network is a collection of brain areas that support high order uh, kind of thoughts. This SEN is a collection of these brain areas that have cognitive functions as well. It's a high order kind of thinking and is also cognitive functions such as working memory, attention and inhibition of the distractions that you are having so that you can pay fully attention to what you are doing. Low levels of self-referential thinking are the third hallmark of flow. So during flow, stress levels are low. So there are no worries and there is no self-reflective thinking. You are not thinking about you, you are thinking about what you're doing. The presumed brain network associated with this is the default mode network. We have spoken about that. And this default mode network is also enhanced when we allow ourselves to have time in other times, not in this moment, to uh, meditate, to reflect, to not pay attention to stimuli in terms of your phone or distractions, but mainly leave your mind to go and wander. That's the technical term of your mind not engaging in anything. So if we balance this, these kind of states of flow, and then we have some time to relax, 
our brain is going to be much more able to enter these kind of states and to get into the second gear of this flow state. This def default mode network or DMN, which is typically active when not engaging in an external cognitive task, have uh, seen, researchers have seen that brain images studies have confirmed that activity of the DMN lower during flow states. So when we are on the flow state, we leave the wandering and we focus on the task. That's why we have to balance those states because we need both, but not at the same time. And they are not happening at the same, at the same time. The literature also provides a list of feelings and perceptions involved in flow. People who experience flow often, at least retrospectively, reported feeling in control, having a clear sense of direction, clarity, control, and a condensed perception of time. So you have control over yourself, willpower. You have clarity and where you are going or what are you doing? What is the purpose of the thing that you are doing? And a condensed perception of time. You know that you have certain time, but you are not immersed in seeing the minutes that are passing by or being rushed. The later means, the last one, means that time seems to fly when people are in flow. In lab studies, several large brain systems have already been studied in relation to flow. One finding is that areas related to the brain's dopaminergic reward system are more active during flow. Of course, because we have talked about dopamine and the effect, and this engaging neurotransmitter is allowing us to feel that pleasure of performing the task and knowing that we are doing a good job. That's the reward system that is constantly being, feed, being fed by these two neurotransmitters, the norepinephrine system and now the dopamine system. So when we create this magical loop of concentration power, that's when we are going to feel the most precious feelings of gratitude, appreciation, and time just fly. Activity of the reward system tends to coincide with feelings of optimism and hope, positive mood, and feeling energized or motivated. And we all have experienced also that. When we are really enjoying an activity, either a skill, a new skill that we are acquiring, either learning something that we are enjoying or doing that something that we are really, really uh, having pleasure, we start feeling energized and motivated and we can do a lot of things in, do in those days. In addition, dopamine can reduce feelings of fatigue or discomfort. That's why we also tend to not pay attention even to the signals of hunger. We are not really worried about other kind of secondary functions. Coffee indirectly increases dopamine, which can feed this kind of loop. But be careful because coffee has to be consumed ideally before 2 p.m. and not in high quantities so that you can have this kind of effect. These properties of the dopaminergic reward system does fit with important dimensions of flow, such as the intrinsic motivation and a relentless dedication to a task. In comparison to dopaminergic systems in flow, Less attention has been given to this LCNE system. The locus coruleus is, a, is largely responsible for releasing central norepinephrine and has widespread afferent connections to areas such as the cerebral cortex, cerebellum, hippocampus, and ventral tegmental area. As such, it has a broad influence on the brain's general state and interacts with many other brain systems. 
basically this LCNE regulates decisions on task engagement against disengagement based on the trade-offs between task reward or the cost. If the trade-off favors the reward, then this LCNE system facilitates a brain state supporting task relevant information processing while simultaneously neglecting or actively suppressing task irrelevant stimuli. So that's why if we relate this kind of uh, reflection of the neurotransmitters and these kind of uh, systems that are going to be activated, when people are at work and they are not uh, being focused on the reward, but they are more focused on the negative things that they associate with work, that's why they tend to be distracted all, mostly, mostly all the time. And that's why they don't move forward during the work days. And they always stay more hours or overwork and they stress and they, they frustrate and they create a negative spiral instead of creating the positive one, focusing on the reward. If let's say that you really don't enjoy too much your work, but you have to do it because it's a means to an end in terms of sustaining your family and giving them the basic uh, needs or allowing them to have the basic needs. So focus on that. Focus on the family things that you can do and the rewards that you are going to have by allowing your family to have food, to have a roof, to have the basic needs met. And just focus on that reward while you are doing your work. And most likely you will uh, start igniting and engaging and enhancing this kind of reward system and releasing this nor norepinephrine so that you can really feel that motivation if you are in that case of not really enjoying what you are doing. So just see it as a trade-off in terms of the reward that you are going to obtain at the end of the month or the end of the 15 days, whatever it is, the time frame that they pay you. So when you are in these kinds of trade-offs and favors or rewards, the LCNC system facilitates this task relevant information processing while simultaneously neglecting the suppressing task of irrelevant stimuli. So you are enhancing the system of not becoming distracted. This brain state manifests itself as a high task engagement also referred to as task exploitation. High engagement exploitation involves the investment of time and effort in order to reap current or expected benefits of the task. If, however, the cost will outweigh the benefits, then the LCNE -E system activity changes such that it becomes more difficult to uphold task engagement and there will be a tendency to get distracted to enter an off focus state. So that's what happens when you don't see the, the benefits, when you don't see the reward, when you start focusing on the negative things of your work, you are not going to generate this intrinsic motivation and you are not going to activate this LCNE system. So you are neglecting your right to enter the flow state because everyone can enter this state, but it is about us. It is about the clarity that you want to have in terms of focusing on what you want. This later state of being off focus has been described as exploration because the brain is then searching for alternative activities of or a stimuli that may be more rewarding than the current ones and which one is the most um, prone 
of people to be engaged with. Of course, your phone and social platforms or notifications, all those kind of um, digital things, digital distractions are the ones that are going to give you the dopamine reward that you are looking for in this exploration state. If you don't uh, manage to motivate yourself. In light of this, the LCNE system can be said to play a role in decisions on exploitation. Should I continue to put effort into the task at hand or should I get distracted? That's a very, very fast question that occurs in your brain whenever you have this kind of <clears throat> challenges in terms of your reward system. Exploration, what are you going to obtain from that? Are there better options for me to engage in if I don't feel engaged in the activity that I'm doing? The LCNE system regulates then exploitation against exploration through patterns of phasic and tonic norepinephrine release. So phasic refers to short bursts of NE or norepinephrine as a reaction to a stimuli. Tonic refers to the baseline or back background level of norepinephrine. The different LC and E output modes are going to be explained in the next figure that we are going to review at the end of the talk with intermediate tonic and E levels, basic and E reaction to task relevant stimuli tend to be strong and high task engagement occurs. So when you stay in these tonic and E levels and then you smoothly pass to the basic and E reaction to task relevant stimuli, you are going to create a stronger bond of these two uh, automatic systems. And you are going to get into the high end task engagement. Hence, this is referred to as the exploitation mode of the LCNE system. When tonic NE is high, basic responses become less differentiated and respond to a broader range of stimuli which indicates exploration of the environment or susceptibility to destruction. Ashton Jones and Cohen, other researchers in 2005, referred to this state as the exploration mode. On the left side of the figure that we are going to discuss about, we are going to see which is the left and which is the right. The tonic NE is low and phasic NE responses are weak, indicating a general unresponsiveness to a stimuli. More recently, other researcher, Hobbs Taken, in 2015, referred to this phenomena of disengagement mode, which is associated with feelings of fatigue and boredom. So when you are already becoming an expert on certain kind of topics and you sometimes find those kind of tasks uh, mechanical now because you have dominated them that's when you start uh, feeling those kind of fatigue and boredom emotions because you are not being challenged so what you should do is try to raise the level of the difficulty of the task or try to attach meaning in terms of the reward that you are going to obtain after performing this kind of task. So let's go now to review the graphics and how do we uh, start on this understanding more, more the curve and the release of this norepinephrine system. So let's see what is going to happen now with these kind of systems. 
Look at this. This is the graphic of the mode of the level of arousal first. So in this first graphic, the task is going to reflect the mood states and performance as a function of level of arousal. So this is the performance that you are obtaining. And as you have more performance, you start also becoming more aroused in terms of the emotions that you are having. And there is one very good um, correlation in terms of engaging here. This is the highest point of engagement. And this is the optimal level, which is the task has to be a little bit difficult. And you have to be attaching some meaning to the reward so that you get to this optimal level. And as you can see, many people, that's why sometimes they sleep when they read. Because if they are reading and the things that they are reading are not really priming this kind of engagement because they are easy or they are just too difficult sometimes, they just get asleep, get bored, and they pass right here to the stress. They don't get to the flow. They pass to the stress, they, they pass to the anxiety, and they just drop the, the task. But when you are in this state of flow, you are having this curve that is that can start. Look at this because this this is a state that we have to pass. Sometimes we can get sleepy, bored, or if we pass that level, we are going to have to arrive to the mild alertness and we are going to get to the optimal level. Now, if we also pass either because of the workload or because you are not really fully engaged with the activity, you can pass from this optimal level to stress, and then anxiety and this, well, this is the panic, but of course that this is very strange that people get to the panic attack, but it happens, of course, at work if what they are doing is a very important task related to probably keeping their jobs, no? So now this is the graphic of performance against level of arousal. In the second graphic or in the graphic B, the plots of performance as a function of tonic and phasic LCNE activity in line with the theory of Aston Jones and Cohen. So we are going to see what is happening with the engagement and how do we get to this kind of task engage instead of being non-alert or inattentive or in terms of getting to the other side of the curve, which is the distractible side. On this left side of the tonic LCNE is low, and so there are phasic responses to, to a stimuli. This has been referred to as the disengagement mode because it is very subtle, this this kind of state of the phasic responses, you are starting to release this kind of norepinephrine. But if you don't keep the mindset of attaching certain meaning to the task, you are going to get distracted. You are going to get disengaged. That's why focusing on the positive things that you are going to obtain by performing the task is the one key factor that is going to take you higher in this graphic to the task engagement. With intermediate tonic LC and E activity, which is this, phasic LC and responses are strong to task relevant stimuli. So that's where you are becoming engaged with the task because you feel challenged by the task. There is a certain difficulty that you can handle because you attach meaning to the reward after performing this kind of task and because you are enjoying the things that you are doing in spite of probably not liking the overall picture. So just focus on the task 
and the reward of the task. Now, with this intermediate tonic, we are going to get to this high level. And this is the exploitation mode that we spoke about, associated with optical optimal, sorry, optimal engagement and performance, which is here. Now, on the right side, this tonic LC and E is high, but the phasic LC and E responses are undifferentiated. This is the exploration mode. This is where we are releasing a lot of norepinephrine and then we become distracted because we are too anxious. We get stress and we want more stress on the task or frustration. We become anxious and we get to the panic mode and we start releasing, of course, more of this of, uh, neurotransmitter, which is not good. The right amount is the middle amount or the balanced amount of norepinephrine. And also attaching meaning to the task, attaching a reward uh, focus mode so that you become attentive to what you are going to obtain from the task, not from the overall picture. Because as I mentioned, probably you are in those kind of people that don't enjoy their job overall but you can enjoy a task attaching the meaning to the task by thinking about your family and the needs that you are going to sustain with the payment that you are going to have and that's it that's the way you move on the task until probably you have more clarity and you start designing a new curriculum so that you can scale or move from that kind of company and get to a place where you are fully engaged in all the tasks. So this is the idea of uh, flow states and how we can attach more meaning to what we are doing and also identifying the kind of emotions because Whenever we get to this flow state, we are going to feel motivated. We are going to be optimistic. We are going to feel rewarded. And that's what we want in life. That's the neurotransmitters and hormones that are going to create a magical loop of making you happy about what you are doing. Thank you for paying attention on this topic. Of course, this is a very, very interesting topic for everyone. So if you like the tips, the reflection, the graphics, the science of how we get to these kind of states, allow me to inspire more people and help more people to get to this place because we need more motivated people in what we are doing because the work what we are, that we are doing is impacting other kind of people. So we have to attach more meaning to the things that we are doing and doing in them with love. Thank you very much for paying attention. Have a wonderful day. And of course, you are invited to subscribe and to give a review, to give your comment, to interact with me and to ask any kind of topic that you want me to speak about under the five pillars of health. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.